hello! If you are new to my channel, hi, I am Noreen Gonda, third year BS Pharmacy student in University of Makati. So today we are going to talk about the things I wish I knew before going to BS Pharmacy part 2. Yes, part 2 because my part 1. And if you want to see it, I will link that in the description below. Aside from that, I will also going to answer some questions that I received after posting the first video. If you want to skip, go to the description below because I don't want to bored ka. Without further ado, let's go get on! Our curriculum is something that you should be in love with. And I don't know why I forgot this to include in my first video, but here it is. Our curriculum is latherized, meaning it allows learner to proceed from technical vocation education into college degree. So para mas maintindihan nyo, ganito yung illustration niya. Every step of the ladder represents your level that you have to accomplish. So first year, then second year, and after finishing two years, you will be able to graduate as pharmacy technician with a certificate in Associate of Applied Science in Pharmacy Technology. Now, it is your choice if you want to continue the ladder or not. If you do not want to continue, you can use the certificate to land a stable job as a pharmacy technician in a community pharmacy. I will not elaborate more what is a pharmacy technician. You can personally search for it, but for now, let's focus on the curriculum. If you wish to continue, you can finish third year. Then you will have a bachelor in pharmaceutical marketing. So you can land works in the field of sales and marketing like as medical representative or medrep. But if you wish to finish fourth year, you will now be able to have the degree in BS Pharmacy. So if you will ask me, what is the advantage of our curriculum with other universities offering BS Pharmacy? So this is what I think. But everyone will be able to graduate with a degree in BS Pharmacy. But not everyone will have a certification as pharmacy technician and in marketing. And I do believe that this will be an edge if you will apply in a job, right? Also, it will open opportunities for students who cannot pursue BS Pharmacy along the way. Um, in connection with the previous topic, since we have the somehow unique curriculum, the way the subjects are placed in each semester might be different to other universities. I will show you the complete list of subjects that we have. However, due to the pandemic, we did not have the summer for second year. The subjects there will be moved and it will be rumbled. So we still don't know what will happen at the moment. So now that you already knew our subjects, you will also know what are the subjects that might be credited if you will transfer. So according to my friend who recently transferred in UMAC, you still need to go to the college and the registrar and they will be the one to tell you if the subjects you've taken will be credited or not. So you cannot really base on the subjects I showed you. After that, they will give you a special entrance exam. After you get the result, they will tell you what are the requirements for transfers, which is given by the registrar. Um, they will instruct you naman daw what are the next steps you need to do after, so you don't have to worry. What if you fail a subject? What will happen? What shall you do? Okay, some subjects, especially the major subjects, have prerequisite subjects. Meaning, if you fail the subject, you cannot take the subject's prerequisite to it like a domino. Of course, what you need to do is to retake it. Unlike the other universities that you can retake it in the summer, in UMAC, you need to wait the subject to open. It can be first, you will wait a new academic school year for a subject to open. Because as you already know, we are like trimester, so everyone is fully occupied and the ratio of the student-teacher is just enough. Or second, they can appeal to the college to open the subject during the summer. But it depends. Like based on what I heard, you need a certain number of students to appeal, like 20 students, before they will open the subject. But technically, you will repeat it. So, is this trend important? 
yes and no actually it depends k-12 is there for a purpose remember that that is to prepare you for the college so some subjects will be taken in senior high school and you, it will not be repeated in college but dito ako sure there will be certainly an advantage if you took STEM as a strand in senior high school. In senior high school, kasi, they will already teach you the basic principles of chemistry, um, physics, biology, botany, etc. Or maybe they will already expose you in pharmacy, just like what my other classmates um, experienced back in senior high school. In UMAC din pala, um, they will conduct a bridging program, especially if you are not from STEM strand. That is to teach other students na hindi kumuha ng STEM about that basic principles. Ay, mga kailangan mong malaman kasi it's a must in the curriculum of pharmacy and hindi na siya uulitin sa new curriculum ngayon. As I said, it depends. It depends siya sa student. I have classmates who are from GAS, Humes that actually excel in pharmacy. But they did extra mile to do readings about chemistry, um, about medicines, etc. That's why I think if you're a STEM strand and you um, choose pharmacy, there will be a great advantage. Is it expensive to study pharmacy in Yuma? Yes. Yes. Yes! Tuition pa lang, di ba? But aside from the tuition, every academic year they require complete medical checkup, which usually range from 800 to 1,500. Um, I will recommend clinics near Yuma where you can have your medical certificate, but it is not sponsored, ha. Huh? For X-ray, I went to Megason, and then for complete medical checkup, I usually go to JL Laboratory in Guadalupe. So for personal protective equipment or PPE, of course, bang bang. Doon ka talaga makakahanap ng mura and maraming pamimilian. How to get there from Yuma? Ganito yun. So from Yuma, you will ride a jeepney going to Tulay, Guadalupe. Then sasakay ka ng MRT going to Taft Station. Then ride the LRT going to Bambang. Then pagbaba mo doon, nandun na yung mga tindahan ng mga medical supplies. Easy, right? I am not that sure if there are supplies there because of the pandemic. So for the books in major subject, we are not usually required to have books, but certainly an advantage. But if they require you like for the quality control, just ask any officer from the Circle of Hygieia, the official organization of Humac Pharmacy, and they will be the one to get the supplier. Um, I also recommend going to Market Market when they have book sales because I found gems there. And you can also try Recto, but honestly, I never tried that. For the lab manuals and books in major subjects, they are available inside UMAP. Just go to the co-op in building 3. I'm telling you guys, they can be very expensive, especially if accumulated. Laboratory usually range from 90 to 180 pesos. It depends. So if you want to study in UMAC BS Pharmacy, I highly suggest to rent an apartment or dorm near UMAC because our schedule is very hectic. We already tried an apartment or dorm hunting around here in UMAC, so I can give you a little glimpse on the rate. But disclaimer, this is just based on our experience last time. So if you're looking for an apartment, the rate is about 10 to 20,000 and for bed space about 1 to 5,000. Well, it all depends on how big is the apartment and their facility, but one thing is certain, the rate is higher because it's also in high demand for students and employees working around here in BGC Taguig. Um, for the food, usually it's 50 pesos per meal, but I assure you there are always way if you want to save. First of all guys, I want to thank you for having interest in UMAC COP and reaching to me to send your questions. Okay, first questions. You experience your po, hectic po ba talaga as in, tas yung mga subjects yung po, difficult po ba? Yes, hectic talaga and nakakapagod I must add. 
Nung first year ako, our schedule starts from 7 a.m. Then nag-end siya ng mga 5 p.m. No vacant, as in jump pack talaga. Then, depende pa kung may mga activities ka sa organization or you need to shoot or group study, which is never ko namang ginawa. Ako, yung pinaka-hate ko is yung 3 hours na laboratory kasi ibig sabihin nun, halos 3 oras ka rin nakatayo. Sobrang nakakadrain na energy both in mind and body. That's why I highly recommend na maghanap kayo ng titirahan na very near sa UMAC so hindi kayo mahahassle and mapapagod masyado. So share ko lang, I tried na sumali sa organization outside pharmacy and sumali ako dun sa dancing, dun sa official dance crew of UMAC and no audition, nakapasa ako and I was labeled as a trainee. However, yung training nila is 5 to 9 p.m. ata. And hindi ko siya kayang ipagsabay sa studies ko. Especially pag first year ka kasi masyadong marami yung workload kapag first year. And ayun, at the end hindi ako nakasali. Hindi ko man lang natry or mag, mag -perf makapag-perform kasama sila. For the subjects naman, they have different level of difficulty naman. But yes, especially major subjects. Because they require a lot of readings, quizzes, and outputs compared to the minor that mostly outputs lang. Kaya, mahirap talaga sila. Second question. Para sa inyo po, ano po yung pinakamahirap na subject on taking that course? Tapos, ano po yung pinakamadali? Para sa inyo lang po. Okay. I just finished second year. So, I think the hardest is pharmaceutical analysis 1. Because... It's a good mixture of math and chemistry and hindi sila magandang mixture. Some parts are easy, yes, and some parts are really hard. It is more of understanding kasi yung principle first of chemistry before knowing yung correct formula na gagamitin mo dun sa problem. So, hindi siya simple alam mo lang yung formula, alam mo lang paano intindihan yung problem, pero kailangan mo i-apply din yung principle of chemistry na ituturo sa inyo. And I'm telling you guys, maraming nasala sa subject na to. Marami yung nag-retake. Ganun siya kahirap. Sa ECS, I think organic chemistry. Oh, wait. Before kayo magsabi ng, whoa, let me defend. As I said, every subject has different ways of being difficult. I just like yung pagiging EC no org chem because most of the topics were already taught last senior high. That's why I'm telling you guys that there is really an advantage if you took STEM last senior high school. Next question, ano po yung most favorite subject mo in pharmacy? My favorite subject so far, so far, is microbiology and parasitology. Because it was fun. Yung lecture kasi and laboratory is equally important for me. Some subject kasi is more of lecture focused and some are laboratory focused but for me microbio is equal i also love how significant the subject is if you are a healthcare professional it is always expected to you to know more about the bacteria viruses and parasites and as a pharmacist what are the medicines for it especially ngayon pandemic diba? so everything from the cause to the pathophysiology, how our body reacts to those bacteria and viruses, and the signs and symptoms, then the medicines, especially the very famous antibiotics. All of it will be tackled in this subject. That's why I love it. That's all guys for now. You can comment and message me if you have any question and I will answer that in my next vlog. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Bye-bye!